Okay, so we are on page 29. And again, what we're going to talk about is how to actually create that model from our data. So we're going to start off with something called the handshake problem. The handshake problem is this. So suppose you walk into a room and there are three people already in the room. You're the fourth person. If every person shakes hands once with everyone else, how many handshakes will occur? Will occur. So we are two weeks out from Thanksgiving about, right? So if you are meeting with your family this year, if you're going to go to grandma's house or aunt whoever's house for Thanksgiving, what are you going to do when you get there? You got to walk in and make the round for the greetings, right? I'm just going to throw some things. It's okay. You got to walk in and make the round, right? And then what do you have to do when you leave? Exact same thing, right? You got to give everybody a hug or like dodge the kisses or whatever the like tradition is in your family. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at here. And this says handshake, but it could be any type of greeting. We're looking at how many greetings will occur. Okay. So when you get to Thanksgiving, who are my people who your family is the first ones there? Or maybe you host. Okay. So you guys are the first ones there. So every time somebody new comes, right, you have to greet them. Who are my people who are not the first ones there? Do I have any la we're the last family to show up people? Okay. So when you get there, everybody else is there, right? You go around and you greet everybody. Um, do you greet people you've already greeted when a new person shows up? No, right? You already gave them a hug. You're set until they leave, right? So that's the idea that we're looking at here. So if we're going to define a handshake as being one person shakes the hand of a different person, that's a handshake. So no self shakes here. Um, one person shakes the hand of another person. That's a handshake. If there's one person in a room, we can't have any handshakes. Does that make sense? If a handshake is one person shakes hands with another person. If I have two people in a room, then I can have a handshake. Does that make sense? Two people in a room, then I can have a handshake. One person shakes the other person's hand. If I have three people in a room, I'm just going to kind of draw this out here. I get a handshake between these people, a handshake between these people, and a handshake between those people. Does that make sense? So we got three handshakes happening. If I add a fourth person, which was the scenario that we had up here, if we add in a new person, and I'll switch colors for my new person. If I add in a new person, right? Somebody new shows up to Thanksgiving. Everybody here already in the room has shaken hands, but we all need to greet the new person. So we had three handshakes, and now we need to add on handshakes for this person, for that fourth person to show up. So we've got three that existed already. This would be four, five, six. Does that make sense? So that's six total handshakes for four people. Now let's add a fifth person. For person number five, they need to now greet everybody at Thanksgiving. So we had six handshakes. There's seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's say I add another person. So I had 10 handshakes. We'll put them up here. I had 10 handshakes. Now we've got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Are you seeing any patterns emerge here? Yeah, I add on another every time. So um, if you look at some of the bigger numbers, sometimes that's easier. To get from three to six, I had to add three handshakes. To get from six to 10, I had to add four handshakes. And then we added five handshakes. So for the next one, looks like we're probably going to add six handshakes. 15 plus six would be 21. And then we can add seven handshakes, so that'd be 28. And then we can add eight handshakes, so that'd be 36. And then we can add nine handshakes, and that would be 45. 
So if I have 10 people in a room, that's 45 greetings that can occur, handshakes, unique handshakes that can occur. Let's make a scatter plot of this information just to see the sort of the general shape of our data. So I'm going to put number of people as my X. And I'm going to put number of handshakes as my Y. And we've got enough space to go by one for number of people. I'm going to go by five for number of handshakes. If I go by ones, I'm going to run out of space really quickly. So I'm going to go by five here. And then I'm going to plot my data. So with one person, we had zero handshakes. With two people, we had one handshake. Three comma three. Four comma six, five comma ten, six comma fifteen, seven comma twenty one, eight comma twenty eight, nine comma thirty six, and ten comma forty five. I don't want to connect this because these are unique points of data. But I do want to talk about the general shape that we've got here for our scatter plot. So does this look linear? Does this look like a straight line? Not so much, okay? So I'm thinking not a y equals mx plus b situation. So we'll figure out what that situation is here in a minute. Just as a refresher, I want to talk about domain and range. So domain for this problem, those input values would be our number of people. What needs to be true about our domain values? What kind of numbers can I have? Anything good? Or are there some rules I need to follow when I talk about number of people? Can I have negative? No, does it make sense to talk about negative number of people? How about like decimals or irrational numbers? Probably not, no. So we're gonna want these all to be integers greater than or equal to one. We started at one person in a room, so we'll do greater than or equal to one. For this particular data set, we're looking at integers from 1 to 10. And then our range would be number of handshakes. Our output is number of handshakes. What kind of values will I be looking at for number of handshakes? What kind of numbers could I get here? Positive? Negative? No, not negative. What about fractions or decimals or no? Does it make sense to talk about half of a handshake? Not really. Um, so again, we're looking at integers. And we're looking at anything bigger than or equal to zero. For this data set, for this little sort of experiment that we did, we're looking at integers from zero to 45. But will I have all of the integers between zero and 45? No, right? We don't have 30 handshakes. We don't have 42 handshakes. We don't have five handshakes. So not all of the values in this range. In this interval, we'll say. And then let's talk a little bit more about the shape here. We said definitely not linear.
could I maybe see where this is parabola like? Maybe quadratic? The more people I add, the more handshakes I'm going to get. I don't have a reason why this would turn around. So I would expect this to keep going up in this same manner. That makes me think probably not um, a, a different type of polynomial that would have more like dips to it or wiggles or whatever. Um, so I, I could expect that this trajectory would continue the one that I've got here. So as we were looking at our table, rather than me keep drawing our diagram, because uh, to be honest, I was running out of colors here. Um, but we said there is sort of a pattern that we can pick out among these values. And that's the idea that we're going to look at for today, how we can use this pattern to be able to determine what type of function we want to use to model what we've got going on with our data. So linear patterns have this sort of uh, or this type of output, okay? So this is our most basic linear function. This is y equals x. And these would be the outputs for the first several um, values in our range that we've selected. So notice for all these y values, we change by the same amount every time. I'm going up by one every time. I could also have a linear function where my outputs look something like this. And so I'm changing by a different amount every time. It's not going up by one, it's going up by two every time. But it's going up by two every time. That's the linear pattern. For a linear pattern, the difference of the output is constant. The difference of the outputs is constant. We are always adding the same thing to get the next y value. If I take a look at the first few outputs of a quadratic function, again, starting with our same domain that we did here for this example, I've got to get from one to four, we have to add three. To get from four to nine, we have to add five. To get from nine to 16, we have to add seven. 16 to 25, we add 9. 25 to 36, we add 11. So we're not adding the same thing every time like we did a linear function. But there's still a pattern here. To get from 3 to 5, we add 2. From 5 to 7, we add 2. From 7 to 9, we add 2. From 9 to 11, we add 2. So I do still have a pattern here. What we can see here is that the difference of the differences is constant, or I should say of the output. So if that difference of the outputs is constant, this would be an x to the first. If I have to go down two lines, that's an x squared. So if I look at an x cubed function, how far do you think we'll have to go down? Probably one more, right? Go down three. So if I have a cubic pattern, to get from one to eight, we add seven. To get from eight to 27, we add 19. Then we would have to add 36 then 61, then 91. These are not the same. So it doesn't match our linear pattern. If I look at that next layer of differences to get from seven to 19, we add 12. Then we add 18. To get from 36 to 61, we add 24. To get from 61 to 91, we add 30. So that second layer of differences is not the same, which is what we saw with our quadratic. But if I go one layer down more, to get from 12 to 18, we add 6. 18 to 24, we add 6. 24 to 30, we add 6. That's where I get that constant. So my third difference 
of those outputs is the same. So when I go down to that third layer, that's going to be a cubic function. So if we turn the page to page 30, the first thing we have up at the top is our handshake table. So I'm just going to recopy the data that we had where we've got some more room to be able to look at this again. So it was 0, 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28, 36, and 45. And then we had already started to pick out a pattern here. So I'm going to start from the beginning, even though I know we've already talked about some of this. To get from 0 to 1, we have to add 1. To get from 1 to 3, we have to add 2. To get from 3 to 6, we add 3. To get from 6 to 10, we add 4. To get from 10 to 15, we add 5. 15 to 21, we add 6. 21 to 28, we add 7. 28 to 38, 36, sorry, we add 8. And 36 to 45, we add 9. So this is what we had talked about before. We had also said that that data on our scatter plot did not look linear. It didn't look like it was falling in a straight line. And based on what we're seeing here from those outputs, since this is not the same every time, it's not a linear function. I can't model it with a linear function. If I go one line farther down, though, to get from 1 to 2, I add 1. To get from 2 to 3, I add 1. To get from 3 to 4, I add 1. To get from 4 to 5, I add 1. I add 1. I add 1. I add 1. And I add 1. That second line of differences is the same. So that means that this is a quadratic function. So what I want to be able to do is take this data and create a model from it. Models are what you looked at in your notes last night and what you used last night. So let's talk about how we get a model from this. We're going to use our calculators. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull up my calculator. And this table that we have here that people versus handshake. I'm going to recreate that table in my calculator and have my calculator do the heavy lifting here. So I'm going to recreate this as a spreadsheet. I'm going to put my label here. So I'm going to use P for people. And then the next column, I'll label H for handshake. You can use X and Y if you want, or spell out the word people in handshake. That's up to you. And then I'm just going to enter the information from my table. So for people, I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then for handshakes, I had 0, 1, 3, 6, 10. 15, 21, 28, 36, and 45. Make sure you hit enter after that last data point. If you don't hit enter and you leave it on that sort of I'm typing things in here screen, then your calculator will not recognize that you have decided that is a piece of information that's important. So you need to hit enter, otherwise you're going to have an issue. Then once you've got your data here, I'm going to hit the doc key. And I'm going to add a page. It is possible to do this on a split screen, but it gets really tight um, to be able to see your function. So I like to add a page. And we're going to add a data and statistics page. So I hit the doc key and I went to insert page. 
and I selected data and statistics. That's how I got here. Now it's got all these blue dots kind of all over the place. Yours may not be in the same place mine are, that's okay. What I need to do is assign labels to my axes so that my calculator knows what I'm considering the X value or the input and what I'm considering the output. So we had number of people as our input value, as our domain. So I wanna click down here at the bottom using sort of my track pad there. And I have my two variables that I entered there. I named my column H for handshakes and P for people. People was our input. So I wanna just arrow down and hit enter to select P for people. And then I'm gonna go over to the left-hand side and do the same thing. So I'm gonna click here and I want H for handshakes. And now this scatter plot looks a lot like what we drew in our notes. So I've got my calculator to show me my data in an organized way. And now what I'm gonna do is have it approximate a sort of curve of best fit here. You guys have seen line of best fit in probably middle school where you plotted the points and you used a ruler to kind of finagle where the line would be best. We're doing that same thing here, but having our calculator do it for us so it's a little more precise and it fits this curve. So to do that, I'm gonna hit the menu key and I'm gonna go down to analyze. And what we're actually finding here is called a regression. Anytime we're fitting a model to a set of data, that's called a regression. And we know that this should be a quadratic regression. So I'm going to go down to quadratic. Now I want to warn you, there's another Q1 in here. Cortic would be an X to the fourth function. So just be careful that you read what you're clicking. We do not want cortic. We want quadratic. They've got cubic and linear and all kinds of other stuff in there too. This function we know is quadratic. So this is the function that models my data. 0.5x squared plus negative 0.5x plus zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my calculator down for a second so I can jot that down in my notes and then take a look at what we're gonna do next. So my function, is y equals 0.5x squared. And then my calculator should be plus negative. I'm just gonna write minus to avoid any confusion. And then if you want the plus zero at the end, great. If not, you don't need to put the zero there. And I know that my x value, my input represents number of people. And my y value, my output will be number of handshakes. Now that we have a model, we can use it the same way you did in your notes yesterday. So if there are 25 people in a room, how many handshakes would occur? Well, this would mean my X value is 25. So I can plug that into my function. And then I can use my calculator to help me simplify. So I, if I type this into Scratchpad just to save us some time here, this would give me 300. So I'd have 300 handshakes. 